Hello, my name is Dr. James Weiner, W-I-N-E-R. I'm director of the Weiner Wellness Center located at 2419 Baldwick Road, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15205. Our phone number is 412-922-WELL or 412-922-9355. We have our own website at drwiner.com, drjamesweiner.com or drwiner.com. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com, Weiner Wellness Center. And we're also on Twitter, Dr. James Weiner. So just a few ways you can contact us. Today we're going to talk about hormones. And I want to ask a question of the non-health professionals in the group. That means, Marie, don't answer this question. What is a hormone? Anyone know what a hormone is? What this reminds me of a woman called some months ago on the radio. Incidentally, we're on radio 30 hours a week on four different stations, most of which can be heard on the internet, so that means friends and family members in other parts of the country or the world can listen in. She said her high school daughter plays basketball and ended up with tendonitis. And I said to her, what's tendonitis? She said, I don't know. That's what the doctor told me she has. I said, what's a tendon? She says, I don't know. I said, do you know what a muscle is? She said, oh yeah, I know what a muscle is. I said, well, muscles move bones, and the ends of the muscles, both ends, are called tendons that insert into the bone, and if they get pulled by the tight muscle, then you get inflammation at where the tendon goes into the bone, and that's called tendonitis. So we're gonna talk about hormones, and you don't know what a hormone is. Uh, your, your body makes thousands of different chemicals on a continual basis. And as I often say, we need to start in grade school, maybe in kindergarten, at the three little pigs. There once were three little pigs. They were unusual pigs. They could build houses. Even though they only had hooves, they didn't even have hands. One built his house out of straw. The second built his house out of mud. The third built his house out of brick. And then the big bad wolf came and blew the straw house away, poured water on the mud house, it dissolved, and the brick house stood. Why? Because it was made out of better materials. And this is your house, your body. It is constantly replacing every cell in the body. You do not have the same body that you had seven years ago. Every cell has been replaced at least once, just like the hair grows and the nails grow. Uh, constant change in your body. You have a new intestines every week. You have a new bloodstream every 90 to 120 days. What is your body made out of? Your body is made out of what you eat. In fact, that's why in Sanskrit, the world's oldest language, the name for the human body is food sheath because they understand it's made out of food. Can people please shut off their cell phones? Thank you. So what's a hormone? A hormone is a chemical that your body manufactures in what's called endocrine glands. Now you have two basic types of glands, the endocrine glands and the exocrine glands. The endocrine glands manufacture hormones which go directly into your bloodstream or secrete directly into your bloodstream and they have almost an immediate response on the organs of your body. You've heard about women who see their child trapped under a car and suddenly they can lift the car to get the kid out. That's an endocrine response where what they're doing is they're secreting adrenal hormones that give them that superhuman strength for 30 seconds or a minute. So you can have very rapid changes with hormones. Anyone know names of hormones? Maybe you know some of the names of the hormones. Let's see. You know any names of hormones? How about estrogen, progesterone, insulin? Uh, how about thyroid hormone? You've heard of some of these hormones. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now what's interesting is that medical doctors have very little training in hormones. They have absolutely no training in nutrition. The vast majority of medical schools do not have a course in nutrition. And what I say is nutrition is so unimportant to your health, why don't we just stop eating? We would all save a lot of money. 
You wouldn't have to worry about whether it's organic versus laden with pesticides, whether it has nutritional content, or whether it's devoid of nutritional content, whether it's genetically modified, whether it's soda pop that leaches out your minerals. Uh, Dr. Warren's gonna be speaking after me and he told me about a very famous neurologist in Pittsburgh whose teeth and jaws are rotting, a patient of his, and he's a neurologist who drinks diet soda. And of course, soda pop is very acidic, which ruins your teeth and your bones. And the diet soda is aspartame, which is a nerve poison. This guy is a nerve specialist and doesn't even know that. He needs to read Dr. Blaylock's book that we sell here, Excitotoxins, or at least get the free literature that I gave Dr. Ware and that he's gonna send to this doctor. So specialists are not experts. I was on an airplane last year and I was sitting next to a man around my age and I asked him what he did for a living. And he told me that he was an endocrinologist, in other words, a specialist in these glands and these hormones. And I noticed he had a full head of hair. Now it's my observation that a lot of people that have lost their hair or have thinning hair is because they have undiagnosed underactive thyroid. And we have pictures on the wall over here of people that lost their hair and grew it back by me assisting their thyroid function. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I asked this doctor on the airplane, Did he know about thyroid hormone? He says, oh yeah, I know about thyroid hormone. I said, well, I've had a lot of people that were bald or thinning, uh, having their hair thin, and they regained their hair through taking iodine to bolster their thyroid hormone production. And he said to me an amazing statement. He says, what's iodine got to do with thyroid hormone production? I said, have you heard of T4 and T3? He said, yes, there's the three, uh, they're the two main, uh, thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. And I said, well, what do you think the four and the three stand for? He said, I don't know. This is an endocrinologist, not just a medical doctor, but a guy that is a specialist in endocrinology. I said, the four and the three refer to the number of atoms of iodine. He said, I never knew that. Now, I can't believe they didn't teach that in med school. I said, and I have found a lot of people can have a so-called normal thyroid panel blood work and yet still have underactive thyroid. What happens is these doctors are relying more and more on tests and ignoring more and more what the patients tell them. Has anyone here had that experience where you try to talk to the doctor and the doctor's not really paying attention to what you're saying? Okay. Or, or he or she uh, says, oh, that would have nothing to do with it. So here are some of the symptoms of underactive thyroid. Low energy, weight gain, hair loss, dry skin, weak nails, constipation, <clears throat> trouble concentrating or memory problems, maybe even mood swings, elevated cholesterol. These are just some of the possible symptoms of underactive thyroid. So let's say you have three or four or five of these and you go to an endocrinologist and they run a blood test and they call you up or you come back and they say, nothing wrong with your thyroid. And I say, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably not an elephant or a hippopotamus, right? Because, you know, you know, hippopotamus doesn't quack and they don't look anything like a duck or walk like a duck. So the thing is, if you have symptoms of underactive thyroid, the chances are you have underactive thyroid. Now, why would you have an underactive thyroid? even though you have a so-called normal blood test. Well, I was lucky enough to study with Dr. Broda Barnes, who's one of the original medical doctors to help publicize this whole idea of undiagnosed underactive thyroid. He wrote a number of books and he related it to heart attacks and various other conditions. And there are other doctors now talking about it, like Dr. Mark Starr, MD. Dr. David Brownstein, MD, and of course, uh, one of my mentors, Charlotte Gerson, her father, Dr. Max Gerson, talked about this over 100 years ago. Because he found that virtually everyone that has cancer has an underactive thyroid. Because the thyroid has a lot to do with your immune system. Now, why would you have an underactive thyroid? You might have a misaligned vertebrae in your lower neck, upper back. 
Anyone have any idea what that would have to do with uh, underactive thyroid function? Well, the nerves, they come out of your spinal cord that go to the various organs, including your thyroid, may be compromised in their ability to communicate the proper amount of electrical flow that actually runs those organs and tissues and glands. So if you have misaligned vertebrae, they can affect the functioning of the bladder. A lot of people have so-called overactive bladder where they sneeze or cough and they end up urinating in their clothing. Some people have constipation or diarrhea. Some people might have a regular heartbeat. They might have an underactive or overactive thyroid and it could be because the nerve flow is not balanced going to that organ or tissue. So structure can affect function. I remember when I was a senior in high school, I wrote a 45-page paper on Frank Lloyd Wright, a famous American architect, and he said form should follow function. So he was not into the gingerbread type architecture that was prevalent before. He tried to have toilets that were low to the ground that would facilitate uh, having a bowel movement, for example. If you go to Falling Water, a beautiful house that he designed for the Kaufman family, the former owners of Kaufman's department store, out in Falling Water, you'll see that they have these toilets low to the ground because it's an oriental concept of squatting that facilitates uh, defecation as well as, of course, uh, uh, birthing children. So he had a lot of innovative ideas. Some of them came from the Oran. And he said, form follows function. Well, that's true of the human body. Our eyes are recessed and we have bones all the way around so that helps protect the eye. Okay, if you studied human physiology, the function of the human body, you'll see how God has designed us where a lot of what goes on makes a lot of sense. For example, you have the shoulder joint. You can do 360 degrees circumduction. You can do 180 degrees of abduction. You can do uh, external rotation uh, or inter excuse me, internal rotation with uh, extension and that's putting your hand behind your back. You can do extension. You have a huge amount of movement in your shoulder because the shoulder really doesn't have much of a joint. It is a ball against an almost flat surface. As compared to like your fingers, you, you can't do all that movement with your fingers. But you can with your thumb. And that's what enables us to do all kinds of things that most animals can't do because they don't have a thumb that rotates like this. Okay, so form follows function or allows function in the human body. And so structure has a lot to do with the functioning of your organs. If you have bad posture, you're crimping the lungs. You can't breathe deeply. If you're standing up straight, you can breathe better. And so these nerves that come out of the spinal cord actually affect the function of the organs. If you have overactive bladder, uh, you have erectile impotence, you have a rapid or irregular heartbeat. Just to mention a few conditions, it may be impeded structure. You may have misaligned bones that are pressing on nerves directly or indirectly causing a change in the electrical flow to these organs. That whole science is called chiropractic. It is not studied at all in medical school. You now know more about that than the medical doctors. And you know more about the thyroid already than that medical doctor who was a specialist sitting next to me on the airplane. As I've often said, specialists are not experts. Now, a lot of people tell me, oh, I don't believe in God. But you know what I've observed over the years? Everyone has people they worship. It may be a movie star, could be a sports figure, could be a political figure, could be a medical doctor. They have them on a pedestal. It's like going to church, they're on a pedestal. And I do whatever my doctor tells me because they wrongly assume this person's omniscient and knows everything. And I just pointed out to you, this endocrinologist didn't even understand the basics of thyroid hormone. He didn't even know what T4 and T3 were. Okay? <clears throat> so, if you have an underactive thyroid, it may be structure. I went to a seminar years ago taught by a chiropractor 
when I was in Atlanta, this guy came up from Alabama and he taught a weekend seminar and there happened to be a doctor attending the seminar who had a very enlarged thyroid, it's called a goiter. And the presenter, the doctor, happened to notice that. He had the doctor come up to the front of the room, he figured out he had mislined vertebrae and adjusted it, put it back in place. That was on Saturday. The next day, Sunday, we reconvened for the second day of the seminar and it was absolutely astounding. This man's swollen neck had gone down at least 50 percent. We were all in shock. The only thing that happened was he had a spinal adjustment. Now you go tell that to your endocrinologist, your PCP. So structure can affect function. <clears throat> How about what you're consuming? Anyone know anything about the periodic table of elements? You ever hear of that? Okay, uh, scientists have figured out that we have something like 90, 95 elements that have been discovered. And it's like the word elementary, my dear Watson. Uh, th this is the smallest complete unit called an atom. And these atoms have electrons. And the electrons in the outermost ring can be grouped into families. So there's a family called the halogens. And they include chlorine, bromine, fluorine or fluoride, and iodine. They all have seven electrons in their outermost ring. What happens is that means that electronically they are very similar. And so your thyroid needs iodine. We just explained that. But what if you're drinking fluoridated, chlorinated water, or you're using fluoridated toothpaste, or you're using bromated flour? The body, the thyroid in particular, will suck up that bromine iodine fluoride in these receptors that are meant for the iodine, and then you don't have enough iodine to make your thyroid hormone. Now let's talk about fluoride a minute. When I studied chemistry, I learned about a guy named Charles Martin Hall. Who was Charles Martin Hall? He started out as an undergraduate student at Oberlin College near Cleveland, Ohio. And one day his chemistry professor was talking about aluminum. He was going through, I guess, sequentially, day by day, these different elements in the periodic chart. And he talked about aluminum. He said, you know, this aluminum is an amazing material. It's very lightweight, it's very strong. It would have a million technological uses, except it is extremely expensive to extract from bauxite ore. And if someone could figure out how to do it inexpensively, they would make a fortune. So this guy thought, here's an opportunity. And even though he was just a freshman chemistry student, he started experimenting. He came up with a method for extracting aluminum very cheaply from bauxite. And he came to Pittsburgh to Mellon Bank and spoke to the Mellons, who at one time were the fourth wealthiest family in the United States. And the Mellons seized on this idea. They could see this was a fortune-making item. And they said, here's what we're going to do. We'll give you all the money you need. All we ask is for 50% ownership. And they formed the Aluminum Company of America, and they became fabulously wealthier, and he became fabulously wealthy, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing is, one of the byproducts of aluminum refining is fluoride. And it was so toxic that the government wouldn't allow them to put it anywhere. But somehow, someone got the research a little mixed up because they did a couple studies in the West where there's calcium fluoride in the water and they found that they may help with bone and tooth strength. So what do they do? They took the sodium fluoride, which is a completely different molecule than calcium fluoride, and started putting it in the water and in your toothpaste. And somehow they're telling you that putting topical fluoride treatments or topical fluoride in toothpaste is going to uh, somehow prevent tooth decay or make the teeth stronger. The teeth are built from the inside, from the nutrients you eat. We just talked about uh, that man ruining his teeth with a phosphoric and carbonic acid from the soda pop, okay? So generally speaking, 
if you want strong bones and teeth, you have to eat the right foods because your body is constantly replacing every cell in the body. And sodium fluoride is a rank poison. It is an enzyme inhibitor. Those are the proteins in your body that actually <laughs> enable a lot of processes to happen in your body. Sodium fluoride is illegal in Western Europe because they, unlike us, have a government that's responsive to the needs of the people. Here in the United States, you have the best government money can buy because of the way we allow the politicians to advertise to gain office. They need to raise untold fortunes. In the last presidential election cycle, it's estimated that each candidate the Republican and Democratic candidates spent over $700 million apiece. Now, they didn't have that kind of, well, actually Mitt Romney may have had that kind of money, uh, but President Obama did not have that kind of money. So where do they get this money from? They get it from corporations, special interests. And then when they get into power, whether they're president, uh, vice president, uh, member of Congress, senator, House of Representatives, whatever, or even state legislature, they're going to do the bidding. There's going to be payback. And so even though fluoride is a rank poison and this myth of it protecting teeth is erroneous, it has been perpetuated. Whereas in Europe, there's no fluoridation of water, there's no fluoridated toothpaste. Just like trans fats, illegal in Europe, prevalent in your food here in the United States. Genetically modified food, illegal in Europe, present in your food and not even labeled here in the United States. <clears throat> So, we would recommend you ditch the Florida toothpaste. We have natural toothpaste here. We even have the Pilu toothpaste that has an herb in India called Pilu that actually heals gums. I've had people with severe gingivitis. They're supposed to have gingivectomies and all kinds of problems. And what they did was, instead of doing those procedures, took the Pilu toothpaste and just painted their gums with their finger and left it on for 10 minutes. And over a period of a month or so, healed it. Plus, I also recommend coenzyme Q10, like our power q for gums. Very, very important for gum health. And then we have, of course, uh, Dr. Warren's invention, the miracle mouth rinse that he's going to talk about. I had a guy in yesterday who had some sort of lesions on his tongue, and they've done three biopsies. It's not cancer. We recommended the miracle mouth rinse. It'll be interesting to see the upshot, what happens with him and if he heals. So, where else might you be having chemicals that inhibit thyroid function. Bromated flour, chlorinated, fluoridated water, fluoridated toothpaste. These are just a few examples of things that can interfere. Then there are foods that may interfere with thyroid function like soy products. I am not a big fan of soy. Soy will uh, suppress thyroid function. <coughs> And I've seen people that switch to soy, like soy milk, and they have problems. We do not carry soy milk here. We have almond milk here. I'm not a big fan of cow's milk. We have all kinds of literature on that uh, literature rack across from the free food. And you'll see we have information on the hazards of dairy products because that's another myth. And you'll see the last article we have in there shows that consuming dairy products actually weakens your bones and your teeth, contrary to popular myth. See, I don't have an axe to grind. I, you know, I, I don't sell dairy. The people who perpetrated this myth, the National Dairy Council, the marketing arm for the dairy industry, telling you that you need milk in order to build bones. No, it actually ruin your bones. It's too high in phosphorus. Okay, so underactive thyroid, very common. Now, what do we do if you have an underactive thyroid? We recommend the iodine plus. It has four different ingredients in it, including two forms of iodine. And we've had tremendous results, including people growing their hair back, people losing weight without even dieting, people having a restoration of their energy, people getting a nice skin that's not dried out and strong nails, and no longer having constipation if it was caused by an underactive thyroid and lowering their cholesterol and improving their memory. You know, there's this thing called cretinism where if your thyroid's not functioning at all, you're mentally retarded. So there's a direct relationship between brain function and iodine consumption. Okay, what if you have overactive thyroid? Some people have that. 
What is the medical solution for overactive thyroid? When in doubt, cut it out. And as I've emphasized so often, medical doctors do not look for causes. They treat symptoms. And it's my contention that if the body is doing something, it's doing it for a reason. And if you have these symptoms, they're like a warning light on the dashboard of your car. If your car is overheating, the engine's overheating, you don't punch out the red light. You go and try to have a mechanic figure out what's wrong. Maybe you have a loose or broken fan belt or a, a faulty water pump or a leak in the radiator. And guess what? They fix that. They don't pay any attention to the red light and it goes out. So if you have an overactive thyroid, bulging eyes like bug eyes, or you're very hyper, or you have a rapid heartbeat or a weight loss, why do you have an overactive thyroid? You may have misaligned vertebrae, like I told you a few minutes ago. I had a lady that came in here referred by a relative of mine who's a cardiologist. He had tried for a year to lower her blood pressure. He couldn't do it. I corrected it with chiropractic adjustments. But sometimes you can have an overactive thyroid because you have toxic metals that are overstimulating the thyroid. So it's not just misaligned vertebrae. It could be overstimulation by toxic metals. And we have products. We have a heavy metal detox product called liver gallbladder flush. We also happen to have uh, the metalloclear, and we've had phenomenal results normalizing overactive thyroid without burning it out with radioactive iodine or using dangerous drugs like propothyroid or cutting it out. Okay, so that's the thyroid. The other thing we have to understand is the endocrine system is all interconnected. Everything affects everything else. And when doctors tell you, oh, this could have nothing to do with it, uh, they're being very short-sighted. Anything can cause anything. <clears throat> so let's talk about a few of the other hormones. Let's talk about male and female hormones. Everyone's interested in that. <clears throat> it ends up, by the time you're 40, you have slowed down production of your hormones. Now we have xenoestrogens, externally uh, stimulated estrogens from pesticides. And all of us are exposed to pesticides, especially if we're eating commercial food. And those pesticides turn into estrogen. Plastics, you're drinking water and beverages out of plastic bottles, you're wrapping up your leftovers in plastic. Some people are microwaving in plastic. They also promote estrogen production. And men and women both make estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Okay, women make testosterone, men make estrogen and progesterone. Just different uh, levels, different proportion. And research shows that the average man over the age of 40 in the United States has an equal amount of estrogen to a woman that's that age. Then you wonder why all these guys are wondering about erectile dysfunction. I mean, I get calls and people coming in here constantly. Guys say, uh, I can't perform sexually. They're very high in estrogen. How about estrogen-fed breast tumors? We have a product called EstroCleanse. I take it myself because I was tested. I was high in estrogen, even though I'm a vegetarian. You know, if you're drinking cow's milk or uh, eating cow dairy, you're getting a lot of estrogen because they load these female cows up with estrogen to produce more milk let alone the meat, which I've been a vegetarian for over 44 years. But even I was high in estrogen. So EstroCleanse. How about women who have had estrogen-related breast cancer? We recommend the EstroCleanse, not tamoxifen, uh, Fumera, or Remedex, because these drugs actually can cause other types of cancer. And we have an article on that uh, by the food table. What if you don't have enough estrogen? While you don't want to do hormone replacement because the study uh, investigating hormone replacement was stopped some years ago because they found out it was leading to increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and cancer. We prefer you try to make your own hormones. I didn't mention that with levothyroxine that doesn't work with thyroid because it's T4 and you have to convert to T3 and most people can't do that. And so instead of taking artificially produced thyroid hormone, why not make your own uh, by taking the iodine plus and changing your diet like I mentioned. 
Okay, so we have the fem estroplex that can help promote estrogen production. We have the progest cream for progesterone. We have the DHEA. DHEA is a hormone precursor used for both making male and female hormones. How about the adrenals? Anyone know where the adrenal glands are located? Uh, outside the health professionals here? The yeah, they're right above the kidneys. And they were involved in energy. I, I mentioned at the outset about the woman lifting the car when her baby was under the car. Now, how many people have been on prednisone or cortisone? What's your hormones? Prednisone and cortisone suppress adrenal function, also cause fungal infections, also suppress your immune system, making you more liable to colds, flus, infectious diseases, and cancer, also cause bone loss and tooth loss, now, it's unsafe to go off cortisone or prednisone abruptly if you've been on it more than a week or so. But usually it's used to suppress pain and inflammation. It's not correcting the pain or inflammation. It's just making you unaware of it. It's like amnesia. It's like being hypnotized. It's pretending that it's not there, like closing your eyes or sticking earplugs in so you don't see or hear something. We have to figure out why you have intestinal problems, why you have pain, why you have arthritis, why you have asthma. They're throwing prednisone and cortisone at virtually every kind of condition now. Totally overutilized. So we have a product called Adrenamax 2. Adrenamax 2 helps to balance out the adrenal function, whether it's overactive or underactive. We find a lot of people have low blood sugar also have depleted adrenal glands because they were trying to make up for the lack of uh, maintaining consistent energy. So these hormones are very important, not very well studied in medical school. And usually the best they're going to do is give you some sort of synthetic replacement, which is not addressing the underlying cause of the problem whatsoever. How about insulin? That's a hormone. You have an organ in your abdomen called the pancreas. It actually is both an exocrine gland and an endocrine gland. It makes this hormone that goes directly in the bloodstream that regulates a blood sugar by assisting or facilitating the glucose, the uh, broken down products of metabolism and digestion to get the glucose into your cells. But it also manufactures things that help in digestion, pancreatic enzymes for example, and uh, fat splitting and carbohydrate splitting enzymes are manufactured by the pancreas. Now there's an epidemic of diabetes, you see it all over the internet. In fact, the late Congressman Murtha, who was killed by the medical establishment, I'm not saying intentionally, but uh, that's how he died. He had said, after he got elected to his last term in office, that he wanted to address this epidemic of diabetes. Where is it coming from? How about all the refined sugar? How about the soda pop loaded with sugar? How about the diet soda? We now know that aspartame Nutrisweet equal actually adversely affects sugar metabolism, actually makes you gain weight. Diet soda makes you gain weight. We have all the information over there, okay? There's a wonderful video on YouTube, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot com. Sweet Misery talks about a woman that was losing control of her muscles, ended up in a wheelchair. The doctors diagnosed her as seriously progressive multiple sclerosis, and then she discovered that it had something to do with aspartame and the diet soda she was drinking. She stopped drinking it and she recovered. They have interviewed on that video in the first 10 minutes several different medical doctors, including Dr. Blaylock, who wrote that book, Excitotoxins, that we have here on sale today. Talking about brain tumors, neurological tumors in the brain caused by aspartame. A dramatic increase on these types of tumors that used to be rare. Do you remember Mayor Bob O'Connor of Pittsburgh? That's what he died of. He went to UPMC. The oncologist there told him he would be back in the city county building by Labor Day. And he was in a coffin. 
Labor Day weekend, they had Mayor O'Connor laid out in a coffin. From the time he was diagnosed, which was mid-July, till the time he died was a matter of six weeks with their barbaric treatments. And they were so sadistic that the Major League All-Star game was here in Pittsburgh, and Mayor O'Connor wanted to officiate, and they forbade him to go, even though they hadn't even started their poisonous and useless and counterproductive treatments yet. And there was a picture in the paper of him and his family watching the game on a television in his hospital room, and he was in civilian clothes. He wasn't even in a gown. Why didn't they let him go there? I think it was pure sadism. How, how about, and, and you know, the thing is that he used to be manager of a fast food restaurant at the University of Pittsburgh uh, Student Union Center in the former Shenley Hotel. And he was known to drink a lot of diet soda. His replacement, Mayor Ravenstall, also was addicted to diet soda. It was in the New York Times when he became mayor that he was drinking six or seven a day. So I don't know what's going to happen to uh, Mr. Ravenstall. This is very serious. And the neurologists don't know this. They don't even understand that aspartame is a nerve poison. They're drinking it themselves. They're putting it in their food themselves. And if someone's diabetic, they tell you to use aspartame, nutrasweet, or equal rather than sugar. It's actually worse for the diabetic because one of the problems with diabetes is neuropathy, where the nerves don't function right. Diabetic retinopathy, where they go blind because the nerves to the eyes are not functioning right. They're actually accelerating the consequences of diabetes by promoting people getting on aspartame. Do you know how aspartame was actually approved? Anyone ever hear of Donald Rumsfeld? Anyone know who he is? Donald Rumsfeld was buddy buddies with Robert Surley of Surley Rab Laboratories. In fact, they sponsored him to become a congressman. And then uh, when he was out of Congress, he became president of Surley Laboratories and uh, eventually became Secretary of Defense not once but twice, was largely responsible for the debacle in Afghanistan and Iraq, where he said that the oil in Iraq would pay for the whole operation when in fact it's cost us trillions of dollars. And of course, uh, he let the American troops stand by while the Iraqi people rioted and looted the museums and uh, stole priceless uh, objects from 6,000 years ago and looted the uh, um, office buildings and stole computers and televisions and furniture and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he allowed that to happen. Well, when he was president of Surly Laboratories, they're the ones who invented aspartame. And the Food and Drug Administration, as corrupt as it is, controlled by the drug companies and agribusiness, wouldn't approve it because they knew, studies showed how dangerous this chemical was. But he got it through. So you need to watch that video on youtube.com, Sweet Misery. Okay, we've got a few minutes for questions here. <clears throat> At least I've uh, stimulated your interest in hormones, very important, and we have to figure out how to improve your hormonal balance, something that the medical doctors probably aren't gonna do. Uh, now, if you have any questions on any kind of health thing, we'll, we'll take about five minutes and then we'll have our drawing. Yes, ma'am. I've been diagnosed with low thyroid Okay, you were diagnosed with low thyroid. And I did not read until recently that I should not eat anything in the cabbage. Okay, well, that's something I didn't uh, mention. Yeah, I would recommend uh, there are these uh, vegetables called goitrogens. And they are the cabbage family, Cab cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower. So I'd say if you have an underactive thyroid, I would minimize those vegetables, maybe one or two servings a week, you know, a cup or two a week, something like that. Yeah. Now, there, yeah. Uh, kale, I think, would be okay. The thing is, is that uh, if you take the iodine plus, are you taking the iodine plus? Yes. Okay. We also have another product called thytropin that we sometimes recommend. We also want to check out your spine alignment. Has that been done? Since I mentioned that structure can affect... Well, the chiropractor may or may not be looking in that specific area because not all chiropractors know the relationship of specific vertebrae uh, misaligned in a specific direction causing underactive thyroid. Just like a lot of them don't know uh, about 
uh, specific misalignments for urinary bladder incontinence. So he or she may or may not be addressing the situation. And also, of course, stay off the tap water, et cetera, and the fluoridine toothpaste. We can buy water, but that doesn't seem to be any Well, if you get spring water, it's not going to have fluoride added unless it says fluoride added, and it will not have the chlorine. Now, if you have uh, water purifiers in your refrigerator or something like that, they're usually carbon-based. They will take out the chlorine. They will not take out the fluoride. And once they get saturated, then the chlorine starts spilling over, so you have to change them like once a month. So there, there's no real adequate way to get the fluoride out of the water that's put in the water. You know, we did have a lawsuit that we thought we won years ago here in Allegheny County uh, on the hazards of fluoride and the judge ruled, Judge Flaherty ruled to have it taken out but he had no authority so they never took it out. As I say, it's illegal in Europe. Yes, Joe. Uh, that thyrosol that you sell, uh, is that good for thyroid? Uh, thy yeah, we also have thyrosol. We have a number of different products. The thing is the Iodine Plus also has selenium and L-tyrosine and that helps uh, with the utilization of iodine. So I'd say it's an improved product. But yeah, we have other products, the thytropin. We also have the uh, thyrosol. Just, uh, just to prove what you said was true, uh, when I visited my doctor, I was diagnosed with low thyroid also. And uh, I told him, well, I'm going to start taking this iodine, you know, to build it up. And he said, oh, get off of that. He says, so he wants me to take Synthroid. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's what we call topsy-turvy. Anyone ever heard of William Schwenk Gilbert and Arthur Seymour Sullivan? Gilbert and Sullivan. They were a famous duo that wrote operettas in the late 19th century in England. And uh, a lot of the uh, themes of the plots would be people that were high-born that actually at birth or something were swapped and they were low-born and the people that were low-born were swapped into high-born and so then you know because he was they were trying to satirize uh, make fun of uh, the uh, stratification of social levels in England at that time and so that's called topsy-turvy in fact there was a wonderful movie that came out some years ago talking about Gilbert and Sullivan during the period where they created the Mikado, which is probably their best operetta. <clears throat> and, and so topsy-turvy means upside down. The doctors have it backwards. They think that taking nutrients is dangerous and useless and unnecessary and that drugs are great and safe. Okay? Now, if you ever see the physician's desk reference, it's about 1,400 pages, very small type. Most people my age would have to use reading glasses. Fortunately, because my diet, I don't use reading glasses. And you're going to see hundreds of side effects. All you have to do is listen to the commercials on television. Pay good attention to the side effects of the medications. Lamisil for toe fungus can kill you. Where you could use bleach for a couple cents and get rid of that toe fungus. You know, when I was a kid, and I was in day camp. They used to take us to the city parks to go swimming. And between the locker room and the swimming pool, you had to walk through this wading pool that was full of chlorine to take off toe fungus. But in modern medicine, they never use a less profitable procedure product where there's a more profitable procedure product involved. And the whole thing with the drug companies is they're inventing chemicals that never existed before, that were never intended to be in your body. Your body has no way to deal with them yet they can patent them and they can make huge profit margins. And medical schools are largely funded and controlled by drug companies, so they, they've been brainwashed. It's almost like being in a totalitarian state. You know, I, I have a friend from Russia and he said that they would see movies and they would see on the television set people standing in line in countries like Italy and they were told these people were standing in line for consumer goods like people had to in the Soviet Union. People would stand in line all day to buy shoes and when they got up there maybe they didn't have the right shoe size so they'd buy a different shoe size and then swap with someone on the black market. In fact one day he was, he was uh, uh, got out of the subway and he saw this big line and he found out they were selling chickens so he stood in line for an hour and, and got a chicken and then carried it around in his cello case the whole day because they didn't have consumer goods. Okay, And then he found out when he came to the west 
that those so-called bread lines in Italy and elsewhere were people standing in line to get into sporting events. He had been had. The propaganda controlled by the government had lied about the standard of living in Western Europe and America, where we have restaurants, we've got grocery stores, you go to Western Europe, they have all kinds of grocery stores, all kinds of restaurants. Uh, you don't have to stand in line for an hour to get toilet paper, shoes, or chicken. Okay, in the same way, the medical doctors are brainwashed, their education is controlled and censored as if they were in some sort of totalitarian state where they are inculcated for four years that drugs are the answer. As I said, they don't learn anything about nutrition. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. Yeah, Bonnie. Um, the um, issue with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, and is it related to these things that you're mentioning? Okay, well, Alzheimer's, dementia can be related to underactive thyroid, no question about it. As I said, cretinism is an extreme form of it. But also we have to look at the aluminum in the cookware, uh, aluminum in the toothpaste tubes that people used to have. Now I think they're making more out of plastic. Uh, how about medications like cholesterol medication? One of the side effects of cholesterol medication is Alzheimer's disease or dementia. We know that uh, these medications cause all kinds of serious nutrient depletions. We even have a chart on that. Uh, we might even have it in the store there. So it's, uh, you know, there's multifactorial. That is the thing that, another thing that medical doctors don't understand is that the same condition can be caused by various different factors. And so you might have 10 people with the same condition and they each have different reasons why they have the condition, yet it's all treated the same as a blanket diagnosis with the same drugs. And people do not have a drug deficiency. They may have nutritional deficiencies. We know we've lost 80% of the nutritional value of our produce in the last 50 years because of farming methods. Plus a lot of people have very impaired digestion and that's worsened by eating this genetically modified food. If you go on YouTube and look up Genetic Roulette, another excellent video on YOUTUBE.com, genetic roulette, you're gonna find out the pesticide genes in the genetically modified plants are intended to ruin the intestines of insects. And when you eat that food, it damages your intestines. So a lot of people are on antacids, which totally stops your digestion. Prolistic, protonics, nexium causes severe uh, nutritional depletion. So I think a lot of these people with Alzheimer's disease, it's because of the over-medication of the public. Uh, public uh, you know, when Medicare was put into place in the mid-60s, the average uh, senior citizen was on one or two medications. Now they're on 8, 10, 12, 15 different medications. I'm the exception. You know, I'm pushing 68. I'm on no medications. Okay, uh, one last question, then I'll stand over here and answer, but uh, we've got to make time for the next speaker, Dr. Warren. Uh, yes? I donate platelets. I'm sorry, what about platelets? You donate platelets. And I've had cancer on, skin cancer on my nose. You've had cancer on your nose. Yeah, well, did you get this picture here? Yeah, I saw that. But did, what I yeah, know is the guy had cancer on his ear, and it's virtually gone in two months right. following my recommendations. And if I would get cancer, I don't know what I would get cancer. Well, you ought to get on a vegan, vegetarian diet, et cetera, and then you won't get cancer. I'm on a vegetarian diet, and I can tell you more about how that has worked for me with the mm -hmm. My question is, would you have any reservations about my donating platelets continuing to? No, I'm as long as your body's making uh, platelets or, uh, you know, uh, blood, you can donate uh, maybe a few times a year. Yeah, that's, that's very generous of, no very, uh, yeah, why? Because you had basal cell carcinoma on your nose? Yeah. No, I think uh, it's probably safe for the person getting the donation. Of course, we wonder why people are getting platelets. It's probably because they're getting screwed up with cancer chemotherapy or some other drug. You know, I, I had a nurse who was uh, working in a dialysis center, an artificial kidney center, and I asked her what percentage of the people on dialysis are there because their kidneys were ruined by medications, and without hesitation, she said at least 90%. How about metformin for uh, diabetes, ruins your kidneys? How about Asacol for irritable bowel syndrome or Kleist Crohn's disease, ruins your kidneys? All right, well, thank you very much. If you want to contact us, our phone number is 412-922-9355. Our website is drweiner.com. Our Facebook page, Weiner Wellness Center. And Twitter, we're on drjamesweiner. Thank you for attending. God bless you.